Today, Porsche presented its first fully electric sports car to the public in a kind of confusing world premiere held simultaneously on three different continents. Oliver Bloom, the chairman of the executive board of Porsche AG, who opened the world premiere in Berlin, stated that this day marks the start of a new era. Well, let's see if that's true. The first models in the new series are the Taycan Turbo S and the Taycan Turbo. To be transparent, I don't understand why they chose to add turbo to the official nomenclature. Neither vehicles have a turbo, so why add the name? I feel like it devalues the Turbo S and the other nameplates like 911. The two new models are at the cutting edge of Porsche's e-performance and are among the most powerful production models that the sports car manufacturer currently has in its product range. Less powerful variants of these all-wheel drive vehicles will follow this year. The first derivative to be added will be the Taycan Cross Turismo at the end of next year. And by 2020, Porsche will have invested more than 6 billion euros in electromobility. Let's pause and think about what that just said. There's going to be a Cross Turismo, meaning that there's going to be a wagon variant in the next year and a half. Thank you, Porsche, for bringing another wagon to the marketplace. So before we jump into the nitty gritty, here are some quick facts on the Porsche Taycan Turbo and Turbo S. First off, it's pronounced Taycan and not Taken or Taken or anything like that. As for power, both the Turbo and the Turbo S will have 625 PS, which is roughly 616 horsepower, but with the overboost feature, the Turbo S will jump to 761 PS, while the normal Turbo will only have 680 PS. Maximum torque on the Turbo S is 1,050 newton meters, while the Turbo will only get 850 newton meters. Top speed for both models will be 260 kilometers an hour, which is roughly 161 miles per hour. The Turbo S beats out the Turbo when it comes to weight, 2,295 kilograms compared to 2,305 kilograms, which in grand scheme of things is basically nothing. Max charging power for both models is 270 kilowatts an hour, as for the compared electricity consumption, the Turbo S will take 26.9 kilowatts an hour versus the Turbo's 26. As for speeds, the Turbo S will take off from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 2.6 seconds, while the Turbo will take 0.4 seconds more tackling the 60 miles an hour charge in 3 seconds. From there, the Turbo S will crush 100 kilometers an hour, yeah, we switched metrics, in 2.8 seconds, 160 kilometers an hour in 6.3 seconds, and 200 kilometers an hour in 9.8 seconds. The turbo lags behind, but just barely, crushing 100 kilometers in 3.2 seconds, 160 at 6.9 seconds, and 210.6 seconds. Both the Turbo S and Turbo have an 800 volt technology, which ensures a high continuous power, reducing the charging time significantly, and decreases the weight of the old 400 volt systems that are common in the marketplace now. Now, what does the Turbo have that the Turbo S does not? Longer range. The Turbo can achieve 381 to 450 kilometers, while the Turbo S can achieve a bit less at 388 to 412 kilometers. Now, let's talk about efficiency. The flagship Turbo S version of the Taycan can generate 560 kilowatts, about 761 PS with the overboost power in combination with launch control, and the Taycan Turbo up to 500 kilowatts, 680 PS. The Taycan Turbo S accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.8 seconds, while the Taycan Turbo completes the sprint in 3.2 seconds. The Turbo S has a range of up to 412 kilometers, and the Turbo has a range of up to 450 kilometers. The top speed of both all-wheel drive models is 260 kilometers an hour. The Taycan is the first production vehicle with a system voltage of 800 volts instead of the usual 400 volts for electric vehicles. This is a particular advantage for Taycan drivers on the road. In just over 5 minutes, the battery can be recharged using the direct current DC from the high power charging network for a range of up to 100 kilometers, according to WLTP. The charging time for 5 to 80% SOC, also known as state of charge, is 22.5 minutes. For charging under ideal conditions and the maximum charging power peak is 270 kilowatts. The overall capacity of the performance battery plus is 93.4 kilowatts an hour. Taycan drivers can comfortably charge their cars with up to 11 kilowatts of alternating current AC at home. Now let's talk about innovation. 
The innovative drive motors and the two-speed transmission from the Taycan Turbo S and Taycan Turbo have two exceptionally efficient electric machines, one of the front axle and one on the rear axle, thus making the car all-wheel drive. Both the range and continuous power of the drive benefits from the high efficiency of the permanently excited synchronous machines. The electric machine, the transmission, and pulse-controlled inverter are each combined into a compact drive module. The modules have the highest power density kilowatts per liter of IV package space of all electric power trains on the market today. A special feature of the electric motor is the hairpin winding of the stator coils. This technology makes it possible to incorporate more copper in the stator, increasing power output and torque while maintaining the same component volume. The two-speed transmission installed on the rear axle is an innovative development by Porsche. First gear gives the Taycan even more acceleration from a standing start, while the second gear with a long gear ratio ensures high efficiency and equally high power reserves. This also applies at very high speeds. Now, let's talk about the price. The Porsche Taycan Turbo S and Porsche Taycan Turbo are now available to order and cost 185,456 euros and 152,136 euros respectively in Germany, including country specific equipment and VAT, value added tax. No word yet on what the price will be in the US. Now, what are your thoughts on the new Taycan Turbo S and Turbo? Will you be selling your Tesla for one? Will you trade in your 911 Turbo 4S? Let me know in the comments below. That's all I have for you now. I really appreciate you watching my video. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and that bell to let me know you value this sort of content. I'm going to let some running footage play now if that's what you really came to see. So by all means, this video is over. Keep watching until your heart's content. Goodbye.